Hello my friends. Guess what? In this module, we are going to talk about records. Where have you heard of that before? <laughs> but these records are different. In this module, we are going to talk archival records and how to send them to the university archives. Okay? Let's get started. In this module, we are going to talk about 1. The records life cycle 2. The usual disposition of records 3. The archival disposition of records 4. Sending records to the university archives the records life cycle. In previous modules, you learned about the records life cycle. For example, in our first module, Policy and Responsibility, we talked about the importance of creating records such as meeting minutes because records document decision making at the university. We create records during the active stage of the records life cycle. Okay, that is my preamble. Now let's talk about the usual disposition of records. For many records, at the end of their life cycle, they should be destroyed. We destroy records because the retention schedule tells us they are no longer necessary for legal or business use. And besides, when records are unmanaged, they take up space and there might be personal information that we have a legal obligation to protect. But there are a few types of records that need to be retained. Those records are considered archival. Let's talk about what we have all been waiting for, the archival disposition of records. Archival records are retained permanently as historical records of the university. Sounds important, right? Well, they are. Archival records constitute the history of decision-making at the university, and we want to save that information for future generations. We want to be able to tell our stories now and in the future, and the archival records help the university do that. But archival records are not just important institutional records. No, no, my friends. Valuable historical records also come from the professorial ranks. The career output of respected academics, their research, publication, correspondence, and other records are of great interest to researchers. Now, let's talk about sending archival records to university archives. A UBC unit should consult the archival guidelines. The guidelines explain the records the archives consider to have enduring value. If you have archival records, contact us. An archivist will visit your unit, assess the records, and determine what records should come to the archives for permanent retention. Academics who wish to send materials to archives should contact the archives as well. You'll meet with an archivist who will discuss your requirements in much more detail. The archivist will need an in-depth understanding of the context of the work itself, as well as a broader understanding of your research interests and memberships with external or professional groups. Generally speaking, archival records from UBC units are retained with varying degrees of access. Some material may require researchers to sign a research agreement. Others may have full access immediately. Professorial or private records are reviewed for privacy concerns and third-party business information, and this material may be closed to researchers for a limited time period or not accepted by the archives. It is important the archives provide access to historical materials while protecting personal information. To recap, in this module, we reviewed the records life cycle, the usual disposition of records, the archival disposition of records, sending records to the university archives, Got a shared drive full of historical records but don't know where to start? Contact the University Archives. We can help. Let's see what you have learned.